it's the it's the it's the 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 uh, less the less fortunate people that can't afford uh, European vacations and other ways to entertain themselves, so they have sex instead, and uh, and in some ways the government it's 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 bad. We almost encourage it by uh, look. I don't want to see starving kids or anything. I mean, you know, but uh, you know, there's tax breaks for having children. They almost encourage it. In the movie Idiocracy, they took it as sort of a humorous way, but they're showing what would happen if this is taken to the extreme. And so all the educated uh, people uh, die off eventually, and the only ones that are breeding are all the idiots. <laughs> it's such a good movie. I think El Brook, no, no, it wasn't El. Somebody else, some right-wing conservative got in a big fight with him. Oh, that wasn't a good movie. Well, you just don't have a sense of humor. You can't appreciate it. You're probably a corporatist anyway. In fact, the movie did not give, was not given the release it should have been. And this is where I think there was a conspiracy because it really, really poked fun at big business and corporations. And uh, face it, who, uh, who are the, what's the engine that drives the movie industry but big business, you know, advertising. Uh, product product placement blah 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 so um, yeah it took it took shot pot shots at too many corporate institutions for their for their uh, for their liking yeah I, that overpopulation thing I think the closest thing which sounds kind of but it's more government spending but I think it'd be better in the long run and this sounds pretty pretty like science fiction is futuristic nightmarish it could be turned into a nightmare but the thing I, the closest I could come up with is a economic incentive uh, for people to, dare I say it, have themselves sterilized. That way, there's certain groups, especially consider the 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 people at the bottom rung, and it's voluntary. You know, God bless their hearts. Just because you're poor doesn't mean you're stupid or anything. But there are people on the lower socioeconomic ladder that, I mean, these are the same people that buy lottery tickets. They're the ones that are going to say, Fuck, "Give me, give me five thousand dollars, and I'll have myself sterilized." Where's the clinic? You know, and uh, that could be a way to stem it. To stem it, especially amongst the lower socioeconomic class. Of course, the people at the top, the elite, the top one one percent, they probably don't want to see that happen, because who's going to clean their pools? <laughs> we start running out of cheap labor. You know, for the service industry, which is the only, probably the only growth industry in this country, is uh, is your short order cooks and fast food people and your janitors and your maids and your carpet cleaners. Oh, man. And how hard those people work. I was talking to Eileen today about like, you know, I mean, my first job was at a fast food restaurant when I was 16. And uh, man, that's some real hard work for really low wages. I mean... The kitchen, when things get hopping, it's a pressure cooker. Anyway. So, yeah, I don't want to just... Back to the climate change criteria. NASA, a, 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 a person, Scientific American. If it's written up in Scientific American, I'll really pay attention. Because Scientific American, unlike the History Channel, the Discovery Channel, which those channels... They put up a lot of bogus stuff. And, uh, but the Scientific American is the closest thing to bridging the gap between the real, out there scientists that write these papers that the layman cannot understand. Uh, bridges that gap to the ordinary, everyday American and, uh, or reader. You know, people read Scientific American in other countries. And, um, and it it's, has a very good reputation, very good reputation, of printing sound science. And the journalists who work for them are very good specialists in that area of journalism. Now, I was given the first thing. Oh, here you go. Here's your peer-reviewed report. Peer-reviewed studies is one of those important things. Peer-reviewed studies. Um, he sent me something that was that was put together by a guy that worked for Rush Limbaugh. And because it said peer-reviewed in parts of the article, he said, well, here's your peer-reviewed study. No, this guy cherry-picked data, misinterpreted it, and put his own spin on it. And it turned out somebody else, thank you, you books, uh, looked even, found something else about this guy. And he, he also had ties to some other 
corporate energy thing or something. I don't know. I looked into the back and this is what I first, this is what I do. Somebody sends me some information before I even read it. Why waste my time? Why waste my time? I check the source. Okay. Finally, finally, this guy, after trying and trying and trying, came up with somebody named Schwartz. And I looked into him and he, and what happened is, is that some in the uh, uh, man, man induced, man influenced climate change debate, the deniers, uh, cite this guy because what happens is, what's happened is, he's an, at, if I remember right, he's an atmospheric scientist. And this man was uh, one of the scientists that made the connection between um, the aerosols that were damaging the ozone layer and other things in our atmosphere. This is the man, this is the man that, uh, that helped uh, make regular Freon illegal, that helped stop a lot of these aerosol and put, uh, you know, um, in, uh, I forgot what the term was, but there was a certain CFUs, was it? But there was a certain type of uh, propellant that was, uh, that was not good for the atmosphere. So a lot of companies replaced it with like CO2 or other types of propell propellant that are much safer. Propellant is the stuff that makes the aerosol can pressurize. And so uh, this guy Schwartz, I said, well, those, those are some decent credentials. But where these climate, climate change deniers uh, like to talk about him is because he has a different opinion as far as the rate that CO2 will affect uh, will act as a as a greenhouse gas. If you read his paper, um, something about oh I can't remember now. If you if you want to know if you want to see the debate unfold, uh, send me a PM or something and I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you where to go. Okay, where this debate was unfolding. But um, uh, yeah, this this scientist Schwartz, he says CO2 is a greenhouse gas. Where he, di where he, where he disagrees is the rate of change because he's trying to bring in all these other factors, water vapor, uh, other kind of aerosols that are still being released in the atmosphere. On down the line, there's so many factors involved. And, and what he's doing is, is just talking about the rate of change, that he has a disagreement with some other scientists. But they're still in the same camp. They're not, they're not denying that there is man-influenced climate change. And, but because this man has a disagreement with him, these, these, uh, these climate deniers uh, jump on it and go, here, that's why, that's why this gentleman pointed me that direction. And then when I said, oh yeah, he's a good, this guy's a reputable source. And then I pointed out to him what the man was really saying. He tried to turn the blame on me. Oh yeah, now, now that I found somebody that agrees with you, now, now you accept his credentials. No, no, it's still in the same rule. All these other people you gave me were hack journalists, uh, people that weren't in the field. You, you gave me an example of a, of a physicist. Look, I have two relatives that are physicists and they know as much, you know, science is so specialized now, okay? If you're a physicist, you don't have time to study uh, all the intricacies of climate change. They're entitled to an opinion, but whether their opinion matters or not, you know, <laughs> who cares, you know?